The new 18.1 update for DaVinci Resolve added a new feature that makes editing music and editing videos to music so much easier, but I want to absolutely make sure that you're using it correctly. The new update includes being able to use a grid of bars and beats of music in the Fairlight page, which is so handy for so many reasons. But I've seen a number of videos released already that seem to have misunderstood one of the main functions of this tool and are teaching people the complete wrong way that it works, which would result in a huge headache for you. So in this video, I'm going to show you this new tool, some practical ways that you can make your life and your edits easier, and I'll clear up that one thing that people are getting wrong so you for sure know how to use it. Secure the cup, and let's get into it. So first things first, at this time, this function is unfortunately only available in the Fairlight audio page. Hopefully they can find a way to also integrate it into the edit or cut pages later, but for now, this is what we've got. To get to the Fairlight page, you can either click the music notes at the bottom of your screen, or you can hit shift seven. First, I'm gonna clean up the page a little bit so we can see better by getting rid of our mixer and our inspector. If your page looks different than mine, it likely has to do with one of these buttons up at the top that opens different tools. Now, the tool that we're looking for is in the top left corner of the timeline and it looks like a little grid box. When you click this you can see three different sections, edit grid, time scale, and resolution. The left button under edit grid toggles the grid view so we can see on our timeline that it extends the grid lines throughout the editing area. Right now it's showing us every single frame as a grid line. The right button allows us to snap our cursor and clips to that grid which I'll show you in a little bit. Under time scale, we've got two options. The left one is time code, which is basically the frames that we're used to looking at when we're dealing with video. And then using resolution below, we can toggle whether we want our grid to be frames, seconds, half frames, or quarter frames, since audio can be edited to a finer degree than video. The right option under the time scale is the one that we're excited for today, and it's called tempo. When we click it, our resolution options expand to give us more possibilities. First, we see resolution and time signature. And just in case you don't know what these things mean, here's a super quick music theory lesson in less than one minute. Most music that we know is in something called 4-4 time, which means that there are four beats in every bar. Usually you can feel the beats of the music by where you would tap your foot along to, and you can tell where a new bar is because it kind of feels like a new start. For example, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If I played a note for every beat that I just counted, we would call those notes quarter notes. Notes twice as long as quarter notes are half notes, and notes four times as long as quarter notes are whole notes. Going the other way, if we take a quarter note and split it into two equal shorter notes, they are eighth notes, and if we split it again, we get sixteenth notes. Songs in three, four time means there are three quarter notes per bar. So you'll hear this in waltz music. One, two, three, one, two, three. If it's in six, eight time, it means there are six eighth notes, and sometimes this is in blues or ballads, often with an emphasis on the one and four beats. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I know that was a lot to take in, but again, like I mentioned before, 95% of the time, most of the music that you're gonna deal with is gonna be in 4-4 time, so you can probably just leave it on that option. Below resolution and time signature, we have tempo and song start. But to better explain how to use all of these, we're gonna need some music. Luckily, my friends over at audio.com have sponsored this video and are currently having a massive sale. When I say massive sale, I mean their lowest prices ever for a limited time only. If you use the link in the description, and the code CYBER70, you'll get their all-inclusive music and sound effects subscription, Audio Pro, for 70% off. That's $59 for an entire year of music and sound effects for your videos. And as if that wasn't already wild enough, Audio's creative team has spent months working with amazing filmmakers, colorists, and editors to create visual assets like film grains, textures, LUTs, light leaks, and more as a free bonus package for all members during their Cyber Week promotion. Motion. So all you have to do is use that link down in the description and the code CYBER70 to get this deal, but it's for a limited time only, so you gotta get on it quick. I mean, maybe wait until the end of the video. I'll remind you again at the end. Okay, so I've gone in and found the instrumental version of this song, Can't Help But Smile by Kid Penny. It has some good beats and sections for us to work with here.
So let's put this track onto our timeline and head back to the Fairlight page. Now that we've got the music on the timeline, we have to do a couple of things to make that grid line up with the music before I can show you the cool things that you can actually do with it. So first things first, we need to align the start of the grid with the start of our song. We could do this one of two ways. First, we could cut off that little bit of silence at the start of the song and drag our music to the very start of the timeline. The other way that we can line up the grid to our song is if, for example, the song happens to be in the middle of our timeline, not right at the start, we can put our playhead right at the first beat and then right click on the timeline ruler and select set tempo grid start. Notice that it moved that 001101 right to where my playhead is. That means that bar one beat one is now right where the first beat of the song is. But you can see that the grid isn't lining up with those notes in the music yet. So we need to input the right time signature and tempo. And there are a couple of ways to do that. First of all, this song is in 4-4 time. I tested it by counting to four over and over and over and it felt right, I promise you. As for tempo, if you've got your music from a site like Audio, it will often tell you the exact tempo of the music right on the site. So if we have a look at this track, it says that it's 112 beats per minute. So let's type that in. And now you can see that the quarter note grid lines up perfectly with the quarter notes that are being played in the song. So it worked. A little side note here, not all music is going to be as obvious as this one is. I specifically picked a song that had nice heavy notes right at the quarter note, so it would be easy to show. But if you change your resolution to bar, you can count along with the music and see every single bar marker and make sure that it looks like it lands in the right place with the audio waveforms and you should be good. Okay, so what happens if we don't know the tempo of the song? There are two ways that we can find it. If you go to a site called all8.com and you choose tap for BPM tempo, start playing the song in the background and tap your space bar along with the beat. After a few bars of tapping, it should give you a tempo. Generally, it will probably be the rounded tempo that you want to use. This is definitely handy, but if you don't have great timing, it can sometimes be a few beats per minute off and then your tempo won't line up. So the next way that you can do this is to have Resolve calculate the tempo for you. And this is the thing that I saw the other people on YouTube getting wrong when they were teaching. So I want to be super, super clear. DaVinci Resolve does not analyze your music and find the tempo for you. Here's how it works. Find the first beat of your song, zoom way in to place your playhead on it and hit I to set your in point. You'll wanna make sure that your grid snapping is off for this part or it could get really annoying. Now play your song and count for let's say four bars. At the start of what would be the fifth bar, we're actually going to carefully place our playhead again and hit O to set an out point. Now right click on the timeline ruler and select set tempo grid BPM or beats per minute. You'll get a pop-up that says number of bars. This is asking how many bars of music the selection is. We know that we counted four bars of music, so we'll put in four there. Below that, there's a button that says set start from playhead. If you put your playhead back to the in point that you made, this will set the grid start point like we did before, but since we know how to do that after and my playhead is currently at the end of our selection, we'll leave that off for now. Click set tempo from range and close that window. Now if we go into the grid options and check the tempo that it's set, we'll see that it is very close to the real tempo that we know this song to be. Generally I'll round to the nearest number because most modern music is played using a metronome that's probably set to a round number. So at this point I would change it to 112, reset that tempo grid start point and we're good to go. Once again, this method of finding the tempo is not DaVinci Resolve analyzing the track to automatically find the tempo. It's relying on you to put in the proper numbers and then it's just doing the calculation based on that. If I were to put in the wrong number of bars for my selection, it would get it completely wrong. There are music production softwares that have the ability to analyze the tempo automatically from a track and do a pretty good job most of the time, but we're just not there with DaVinci Resolve yet. I feel better now. So now we know how to set up the grid. We know how to find the tempo and line everything up properly. So the question is, why? Well, here are the two main things that I find this super helpful for. First off, this can help you to edit your music better to fit your video. Let's say there's a section of the song that we want to cut out. After we have our grid all lined up nicely, we're going to choose bars as our resolution, and then we're going to choose snap to grid. This will make it so that we can still click and drag to move the playhead freely, but if we just click, it'll always snap to the nearest grid line. Now that it's snapping, drop the playhead at the start of a section that we want to remove and make a cut. Now go to the end of that section and click again, it'll 
automatically snap, make a cut, and then you can either ripple delete or you can delete and move the pieces together. Notice that the pieces are also snapping to the grid lines that we specified, so it's nice and easy to put them in place. And now we have a perfectly timed transition from one section of the song to the other. And if you want, you can right click and add a little crossfade to smooth it out. In a similar way, this can also help you to extend a song easily too. Let's say that I want this chill part from the start of the song to repeat as background music for a while before the rest of the song kicks in later. I can find the section that I want to repeat using the snap to grid function again, drop my playhead and cut so that I'm making a little clip of that part that I want to copy. Now I can just move the rest of the song out of the way and if I hold alt or option and drag the section I want, I can copy it over into the new space. And again, because it's snapping to the bars, it's super easy to line up. Up. Combining these two methods of cutting things out and copying things, you could do a full rearrangement of a song if you really needed to. And the other thing that this makes super handy is being able to edit your video clips to the beat of the music easier. And as always, there are a couple of ways to do this. Inside the Fairlight page, you can actually move around your video clips if you want, and they'll snap to that grid that you've made. So if I wanted to set my grid to quarter notes, I could have a clip on every beat if I wanted. Alternatively, if you don't want to move video clips around in the Fairlight page, you can go along your song and find the spots you want to add clips, place your playhead, and either cut the audio or add a marker by using the M key. Now when you go back to the edit page, you can use those cuts or markers to snap your video clips to the nearest frame. If you're finding that it's not snapping the way you want it to, hit the S key to make sure that snapping is turned on. Now keep in mind, anytime you're editing audio, you're editing with a finer resolution than video. So you may have an audio cut that's between frames for your video timeline. In general, if they don't line up nicely, I find that placing the video earlier than the audio cut makes it look best if you're trying to get them to line up. So that's how you can use the new tempo tool in DaVinci Resolve to edit music and to edit videos to the music. I will admit it's a bit of work up front to get everything lined up, but it sure can make things easier afterwards and you do get really quick at it once you've figured it out. Quick reminder to head down to the description and use that link in the code Cyber70 to get a year of music music and sound effects for your videos for $59, just a ridiculous deal. And on your way down there, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future videos. Huge thank you to audio.com for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.